Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka and I welcome you all to the session on test ng annotations in Selenium. Let's have a look at the agenda for the session. First, I will give you brief insights into test ng. Next, I will talk about why use test ng with Selenium. And moving further, I will discuss few pointers that decides the winner among the test ng and j unit. After that, I will tell you what are the various annotations that test ng supports in Selenium. Once you understand these annotations, then I will tell you how to execute various test cases in Selenium with the help of these annotations. I hope you found agenda interesting. Now, without wasting any further time, let's get straight into the module. First, let's understand what is test ng. Test ng stands for test next generation and it is an open source test framework that is inspired by j unit and n unit. Well, not just inspired but an upgrade to those two frameworks. So you may ask what is the upgrade over here? The upgrade with test ng is that it provides additional functionality like test annotations, grouping, prioritization, parameterization and sequencing techniques in the code which was not possible earlier. Besides managing the test cases, even detailed reports of tests can be obtained by using test ng. And there will be a summary displaying the test case that has failed along with the group which it was part of and the class that it falls under. When bugs can be accurately located like this, they can be fixed immediately to the relief of developers. So these are the new features that was upgraded in the test ng. Now that you know what is test ng, Let's see why use test ng in Selenium. Software developers from around the world will unanimously agree that writing code in test cases saves a good part of debugging time. Why? That is because test cases helps in creating robust and error free code. So how does it do that? By breaking the entire code into smaller test cases and then by evaluating each of these test cases to pass or fail conditions, you can create a error free code. Since Selenium does not support execution of code in test cases, you can use test ng for the same purpose. And this is where test ng fits in the Selenium framework. Also, test ng helps in generating a report in a proper format that includes the number of test cases runs, the number of test cases passed, and the number of test cases failed, and the tests that have been skipped as well. And multiple test cases can be grouped more easily by converting them into test ng.xml file. In this, you can make the priorities as to which test cases should be executed first and which after that. And using test ng, you can execute multiple test cases on multiple browsers, that is, it supports cross browser testing. And test ng can also be integrated with frameworks like Maven, Jenkins, etc. So, these are some of the reasons that depicts why test ng is necessary and why it is used in Selenium. So you already know that test ng is inspired from JUnit. But do you know how is it better than JUnit? Let's see that now. So here annotations are easier to understand. Annotations in test ng are the lines of code that control how the method below them will be executed. And they are always preceded by the add symbol. So you can see you can set your priorities. Like you can set the priority to 0 and you can set the priority to 1. And also if you want to execute some of the test cases before the test that should be followed by add before annotation and the tests that have to be executing during the test with add test annotation and after the test if you want to close the driver or if you want to clean up the cache or something it can be done using the add after test annotation. So this is how test cases can be grouped more easily and the annotations are very easy to understand. Next parallel testing is possible. So in case of parallel testing you can simultaneously test the test cases in various browsers like Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Edge, Safari, Opera and many more. So for that you just have to mention the driver and the path of the particular drivers. And also detailed log report can be generated. So these are few of the advantages of test ng over j unit. Having understood this now let's dive into the core part of the discussion that is test ng annotations. Annotations in Selenium are used to control the next method to be executed. Test annotations are defined before every method in the test code. In case any method is not prefixed with annotations, then that method will be ignored and not executed as a part of the test code. To define them, methods need to be simply annotated with add test annotation. 
So you have at before suit, at before test, at before class, at before method, at test, and after method, after class, and many more. Now let's dive into the details of all these annotations. First, at before suit, a method which is marked with this annotation will run only once before all the tests in the suit have run. Next, at before test, a method which is marked with this annotation will be executed before first at test annotated method. That is, if there is any at test annotation, so the very first or the very previous test but that is marked with add before test will be executed. Next, add before class. A method which is marked with this annotation will be executed before first add test method execution. It runs only once per the class. Next, you have add before method. A method which is marked with this annotation will be executed before every add test annotated method. So now you have add test. So whatever is the sequence of the test, or whatever you want to perform it as a part of your test, you can execute it over here. So this method will run for all your test cases. Next you have at after method. A method which is marked with this annotation will be executed after every at test annotated method. Next at after class. A method with this annotation will be executed after the all methods in the current class have been run. Next at after test. A method with this annotation will be executed when all the add test annotated methods complete the execution of the classes which are inside the test stack in test ng.xml file. And the last one is that after suit. So this annotation will run once after execution of the test in the suit have run. So these are the various test ng annotations in Selenium. And as you understood, each method or each annotation has its own purpose. Having understood this, let's move further and see how to write a test case using TestNG. So this is a flow of execution. So first you have to write before suit, after that before test, after that classes, before method, then you will get your test annotation and after that after method, after class, after test and finally you have to close after suit. So this is the execution flow. And this is how it will execute no matter what even if you jumble it or even if you write after suit before or if you write after class after that or if you write the before test as first and then you write the before suit. Even if you jumble everything it will again execute in the same sequence only. So this is all about the annotations in test ng. Now let's move further and understand how to write a first test case using test ng. So first you have to create a new test ng project then configure the build path and add test ng library. And after that you have to create a test ng class file and code the program and run it on a test ng suit and also you can run it as a test ng test. So now let's see a small demo. So I have created a project over here called as a Eureka Selenium project. And then I'll just click on the configure build path. So you can see here I have all the jar files. I have the maven dependencies library. I have test ng library. And also I have a JUnit library. So I'll just say apply and close. So I have created a simple example over here. So first what I will do. I will say public string base URL. So I want to navigate through edureka.co website. So that is the reason I'm just specifying the website over here. And next I'm giving the driver path. So the driver that I am using is the Chrome driver and this is the path where I have saved my Chrome driver. So that's the reason I'll be giving the path for the Chrome driver. Next, I have to create a driver object. So that's the reason I'm saying public web driver and a driver. And now I'm simply using only one annotation that is at test annotation. So you can see it comes under org.testng.annotations.test package. So it has a target value and it has a retention also. So it marks a class or a method as a part of the test. Yes. So what I have done, I have just created a method called verify homepage title. So for that, I'm saying system.out.println. I'm just specifying a print statement like launching the Chrome browser. And then I have to set the system property for the Chrome browser. So what I'll say, I'm using Chrome driver. So I'll say web driver and the driver path will be this one. So it will refer the driver path from here. 
and after that I have to create a new object of Chrome driver or else it won't create an instance of that. So that's the reason what I'm doing. I'm just saying driver is equal to new Chrome driver and I want to get the base URL. That is this one. So what I'm doing either you can specify in double quotes as this or you can just write it in this way as well. As I have created a string object of base URL. So that's the reason I'm just passing the object over here. Next I'm trying to match the actual title and the expected title of the web page. So the expected title will be instructor led online training with 24 7 lifetime support followed by Eureka. But for the actual title I have not specified anything. It has to take from the website now. So that's the reason I'm using assert equals actual title and expected title. If yes, then it will say test case is passed else. It will say the test case has failed. So now let's see a very small thing. So you can see here the title is instructor led online training by 24 7 lifetime support and followed by Edureka. This is the same thing that I have been given here. Now let's run the program and check the output. So I will run this as test ng test. Let's see what happens. So it's telling launching the Chrome browser. You can see that it launched the Chrome browser and it navigated through edureka.co. And you can see the title over here that is instructor led online training with lifetime support. And it closed the driver as well because I've given driver.close. Okay. So now let's check the output. So what was the test? The test was to verify the home page title. On default test, test that was run is one. There were no failures and there were no skips. And also on the default suit, total test that was run was only one that is this one, the verify home page title. And again, there was no failures and there were no skips. Now suppose say I remove this and I just write it like this. I'll save the program and I will run it as test ng test. Now let's see what happens. Again detected the version of test ng. It said it launching the Chrome browser and it is and the Chrome driver launched Chrome browser. It's navigating to edureka.co. And here you can see that there was an exception telling Java lang assertion error and it's telling the expected thing was this but it found this thing because I have removed the pipe over here. So what it's telling the actual title that was found was this but here it was able to find only this. So that's the error it threw and it's telling the test ng assert was failed. There was a failure and again it's telling test that was run was one and also there was a failure as well because I have missed that. So this is how you can use test ng annotations. So this is a just simple example of how to use add test annotation. Now we'll see the same example using three different annotations that is add before test, add test and add after test annotation. So this same example will be clubbed into or it will be grouped into three different annotations. Let's see how it works. So I have created an example called public class annotation example. Okay. Again, what I am doing here, I'm just giving public string base URL is equal to edureka.co and the driver path I'm specifying for my Chrome driver and I'm creating object of a web driver. And now I'm using add before test annotation. So this comes under the package org.testng.annotations.before test. So I have already imported the package for before test, after test, and add test as well. So what I'll do, I'll just say system.out.println and launch the Chrome browser. Again, system.set property, I have to set the properties. So I will set the property for my web driver and I'll refer to the driver path. And after that, what I'll do in the before test, I'll create an object of a new Chrome driver and get the base URL that is edureka.co. So these are the things that is happening before the test. And that test, what will happen? And that test, I have to verify the home page title. So I'll specify the expected title and in the output I want the actual title. So I'll say driver.getTitle. And again, I'm using assert equals to verify whether the actual title matches with the expected title or not. So these are the operations or the actions that should happen at test. And finally, at after test, what I should do, I should just close the driver.
that is driver dot close. So in this example, you can see these four statements as part of before test and these three statements are a part of at test annotation and this will be performed in after test annotation. So this is how I have split the code and grouped among three different annotations so that it is very easy to understand. So you can easily get to know that these are the functions that will be happening at before test and this is what will be happening during the test and this is what will happen after the test. It's very simple to understand, right? So yeah, this is how the test ng actually works and now let's run and check for the output. So I will run this as a test ng test. So you can see it detected the version of test ng. So it said it's launching the Chrome browser and now you can see the Chrome driver launched Google Chrome browser and it's navigated to edureka.co and it will verify the title now and then after that it will just close the driver. So you can see on the default test and the default suit the test that was run was one and there were no failures and no skips as well. So this is how your results looks like. So you can see here on the default suit there was a default test and the class name of the test was annotation example and during the test the method was verify the home page title. So this is how your summary of the test report looks like. And there is no fail test, so it won't display. So this is a summary. Yes. So this is how you can specify the annotations and group it in a very understanding way and run the test cases. I hope you understood this. And now I will jumble all the annotations and write the test cases. I hope you know the sequence and the flow of annotations. So first I have created a class called test and annotations. After that, I'm writing my test case one. So that will be followed by at test annotation. So simply I want to print in test case one. Next, there's one more test case. So that will also be followed by at test annotation and I've created a method called test case two. And for that I'll write in test case two. So after this, I'll write before method and after method. Again, I'll create a method for before method and after method and I'll just say in before method and in after method. After that what I am using I'm using before class and after class and I have defined the methods for that as well. After that I will write that before test and that after test methods. So it will just print in before test and in after test. And finally I will write at before suit and at after suit. So you can see that first I wrote the test cases that is one and two. Then I use before and after method then I use before after class then test and then suit. But what is the execution flow? The execution flow is first comes before suit, before test, before class, before method and then test after method, after class, after test and after suit. But here you can see that I have wrote in a jumbled way. But when I execute the program you can see it will follow the same sequence. Let's check that now. So you can see it's detected the version of test ng and there were two test cases that was run. So as I have told you how it will say first it will say before suit and then in before test and before class and before method and then it will execute the first test case. Then after before method what happened after method got executed and after that again it's executing before method because it has one more test case. So it will run one more test case that is test case two. again it will say after method after class and after test. But you can see that there is no after suit here because first it ran both the test cases and I hope you remember that a method with after suit annotation will run once after execution of the test in the suit have run. So it executed only till after test and it said test case one and test case two was passed. That is in default test. You can see it's telling in default test there were two test cases that was run. There was no skips and no failures. And after that it said in after suit because after all the test cases have run it will just run only once that is the reason it ran after the suit. And again in the default suit you can see the number of test cases was true that was run and there were no failures and there were no skips as well. So this is how all the annotations can be used and also you can execute many other examples based on the different annotations and you can use all the annotations and group your examples in a very easy way. Now let's see one more example of a cross browser testing. 
So what I have done here, I have just created a class called cross browser test. This is nothing but a cross browser script where the same test cases will run across the different browsers. And test ng is very helpful for that, as I have already mentioned you before. Now let's see how it works. So what I have done, I have written here at before test. And the parameters is also one of the annotations. It describes how to pass the parameters to a at test method. So in the test, I want to specify the browser. So that is the reason I'm using at test parameters. So now I'm setting up a method called string browser and that throws exception. So first I want to set up Firefox browser. So that's the reason I'm giving if browser equals to ignore case of Firefox set the system properties of the Firefox driver. So this is how I do that. I'll specify the path and I'll create a instance of a Firefox browser and next I'll check it for the Chrome driver. That is I want to launch a Google Chrome with the help of Chrome driver. So that's the reason I am specifying it in this way and after that what I want to do. I want to check for edge as well. That is Microsoft edge as well. So this is how I'll do that. I'll set the system properties and I'll create an instance of a new edge driver. If no browser passed, then it has to throw an exception. So that's the reason I'm telling throw new exception, telling that browser is not correct. If the other test cases fail. And after that, what I'm doing, I'm specifying the time mods for implicitly wait. I want to wait for 10 seconds because it will take time to load the browsers, execute the test cases, right? So I don't want to throw exception or I don't want it to close the driver or anything like that. So that's the reason I'm specifying implicitly wait. So this is all the things that is happening before test and let's see now what happens at test. So public void test parameter with XML throws interrupted exception. So what I'm doing, I'm just getting the driver telling driver dot get and specify the URL that is a dot I want to log in so I want to click on the login button. So this is how I'm specifying with the help of a locators. If you wish to know how to locate elements with the help of locators and everything you can check out my video in our YouTube playlist and you can very well understand these concepts in depth and after that what I'm doing as it is a link text I'm clicking on the login button and again after that I'm using a thread sleep because I want to know what actions are happening. So I'm just using a four milliseconds of sleep time and now I want to enter the username and password. So that is the reason I'm specifying driver dot find element by ID. This is the value of my locator for ID and I'm using send keys because it is a text box. I'm entering the username and again same for password and what I'm doing. I'm using the next button because I want to hit on the login button. So that's the reason I'm specifying next dot click. I want to search this as well. I'll inspect that and I will search it. So for that I'm using CSS selectors again. If you wish to know what is CSS selectors, what is X path and everything you can check out the videos. Again, this is a type of locators only. So this is how I'll specify the search input value for my CSS selectors and then I'll send keys as selenium and after that I want to search it automatically. So that's the reason what I'm doing. I'm specifying the X path for the search icon. So finally I'll say search button dot click and now I have written a text ng dot XML file. So you can see there are three different types of browsers. And I want to specify the class path for all the three different browsers. So that is the reason I have written XML file for the test ng. So this is how I need to write it. So the test ng suit name will be test suit, third count will be two, and the test that will run in parallel. So first, the test name is Chrome test. So first, what will happen? The Chrome browser will get launched. The parameter name is browser value is equal to Chrome, and this is the class name that is the package name which is code.edureka.pages followed by the class name. The class name is what? Cross browser script. Yes. So after that I'll close the class and I'll close the test. Again the second test name will be Firefox test. Parameter name is browser value is equal to Firefox. Again the class name will be the same. Again after that you have your edge test. Again the same thing for that and finally I will close the suit. So first you can see I opened the suit. Then I opened the test. Then I opened the classes. Close the test again open the new test again open the classes and then close the class and after everything I close the suit because I have told you it only executes once. So now here what you need to do is you need to run this as a test ng suit. Let's see how it works. So you can see test ng version was detected. First it launched Google Chrome browser. It's navigating to edureka.co. Hit on the login button 
and simultaneously it launched Firefox browser navigating through edureka.co. Let me check with this. You can see it's entering the username and the password and hit on the login button as well. Again, it's navigating through the edge and it hit on the sign in and you can see here clogged in and it's giving the search as selenium. So this is how you can run the test cases. So you saw it executed on three different browsers and it performed the actions on all the three different browsers. If you wish to know how to run a cross browser script in more detailed way, you can check out the video on our YouTube playlist and you can have a very depth knowledge about that as well. So this is how you need to use all the annotations. You can configure your testng file and you can configure your XML file as well based on the script that you have written in your class file. And this is how you can use all the annotations and that serves different purposes. And yes, that's all about the test ng annotations in Selenium. If you have any queries, you can just comment in the comment section below and we will reply back and resolve your query at the earliest. So that was all about today's session. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you and have a nice day.